This is an interview with Daniel Hinsley. He's been a great resource for this group and is a poacher turned gamekeeper. He's a patient who had 15 years of pain, writes about his experience and how he's recovered and how he helps people recover from pain themselves. His particular interest in uh, high level sporting performance, but he's also helped people with simple journeys of understanding their pain and recovering from it. If you're interested in hearing about Daniel's transformation and how he helps others transform their lives, then watch the video. Thank you, Ron. So thanks for giving us your time, Dan. So for anyone who doesn't know you, um, and like lots of people who help other people in this field, um, you've had your own experience of pain and you've also moved to the point where you have helped others out of pain from that experience and what you've learned. So just to give us a background flavor of where you were, and you know, maybe how bad things were, just give us a history of that for you as best as you can. Yeah, okay, so um, so the summary is I, I had 15 years of chronic back pain and sciatica. Uh, which started in my twenties. Um, I ended up with a, you know, doing the rounds of all the different practitioners, and ended up after a, a year or so period with a with a surgeon, uh, who with an MRI scan result that showed me that I had bulging discs. Um, so anyone familiar with sort of this uh, TMS or mind body world will know that this probably hopefully know now that this is a reoccurring theme. <laughs> You end up with a, an MRI scan that shows damaged discs and then sent away to manage manage the pain, but with the belief that you are damaged. Um, so following that, I spent 15 years of in and out of pain with the worst being, I would say like 75% of the year I was in, in quite severe pain and the best maybe a month of the year I would have been in pain. But within those 15 years, fluctuating episodes of, of quite severe pain. Um, and prior to that, in my twenties, I was always really active. So I was a gym goer, played football, played golf. Um, always a jack of all trades, master of none. Uh, but but loved being active. Um, so that sort of fifteen year period was quite difficult, quite challenging because I had to drop a lot of activities. Um, couldn't do a lot of the things I loved. Anyway, fast forward. Um, fast forward. 15 years and I come across the the mind body work Dr Sarno and you know, George Oldfield um uh, David Hanscom and and the, just this 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 field um of of mind body work and sort of over a two year period after reading it and rejecting it and realizing it probably did apply and um doing doing the work that that it suggested ended up being pain free and I guess um, beyond that, um, so being pain free was one thing, but then I, the the bit that really made a difference was moving forwards and reintroducing all the activities and more than than that I used to do. So to in if to sign off for my own health, uh, I uh, I'd signed off with a half Ironman triathlon, um, which was pain free, other than they expected being knackered. Um, but uh, yeah, so I managed to go from a point where I couldn't run at all. Um, I could do, if I ran, I would have a severe sciatica uh, flare up um, to the point where, you know, I could complete a, an Ironman, an Ironman 70.3 without, without any, uh, without any pain. Um, and that was, that was in 2019. So I'm now about four years, what's that, four years, four years-ish of, of being what I class as, not just recovery, actually, I would say beyond recovery. So I think the definition of recovery is about returning to where you were before. And now I, I, I honestly think that, you know, as a, on a human level and beyond, and beyond what I was <laughs> at the beginning, both physically, mentally, emotionally and everything. Um, so yeah, so, so there we are. It's interesting now you describe that return to what was normal, what would be normal for someone's age, and then you've gone above that. Because a lot of people can't even see uh, return to basic activities as possible, can they? When mm. you're in that depth of darkness and pain and you're almost written off by the medical community. Yeah, 
Yeah, agreed. I think there's sort of two camps as well that I can have come across is the is the both both in the same science, but for me there's a subtle difference. There's a camp that is like you use mind body techniques to live well with pain, uh, which is which is good. You know, I'd I'd, I'd have taken that as opposed to seventy five percent of the year being crippled with pain. But I think there is another group that you know that believes in complete recovery and uh, and and more. <laughs> yeah, and I, would, I would put myself in that latter camp uh, based on my experience. Yeah, I'm with you on that. What I think people would be finding really interesting is the level of physical uh, conditioning you've got to. So if you measured all your metrics, <clears throat> the time you could run, the distance you could run, your heart rate, and uh, how hard it was, and, you know. It's a really a, a very good level uh, Ironman triathlon or whatever it was that you completed at whatever age you were in 2019. And yet 15 years old, you'd, you'd attempted to do all of these different activities and gradually they all got knocked off your list and you were told you had to live with the life that yeah. didn't include any of them. So that conditioning of the physical body I always think it's really important to, first of all, to the person to understand it's a possibility. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's, there has to be some respect for age and the height you are and the changes in your body oh, yeah. at that age and uh, your genetics and your predisposition to be good or bad or at one spot or another. However, to write off progress because of any physical uh, perception is is kind of pulling the rug on yourself, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, agreed. I mean, don't get me wrong. I wasn't swimming my strongest. I was actually quite good at open water swimming. Won a couple of races there, but but in general, I'm in the middle of the pack. You know, I'm no I'm no amazing athlete, but that's not the point for me. It's just it's like always. That's like one of what. So there are a number of ways of you know, calming the nervous system. And for some people, and me being one of them, physical activity is it. So when, when that's taken away from you as one of your stress releases, um, it's, it, it can be really challenging. So for me, yeah, it's not about winning things. It's It was always about just the joy of movement and sport and activity and um, being able to do it again. Because <laughs> it and has, a, has a double effect because that's one of the major techniques that, that releases stress from my body. It's one of the activities that does that. And that's one of the first things that people lose access to. And it, yeah. it's based, isn't it, in the belief that that part of the body is injured. Yeah. Uh, and it's not that it isn't painful, but it isn't based in injury. Injury may be present if there's a history to support that, but we know that within a few months that tissue is healed. But if you don't have a recovery that's in line with everybody else or similar people who have suffered similar pains or injuries or trauma then it makes us wonder what it is wrong with us and that's where you tend to sit we're able to unpick what uh what, what a pain that comes from a physical injury and yet a very similar or identical feeling pain that seemed to come at different times in your life when you weren't really physically loading it in the same way could you mm -hmm. just expand a bit on what the triggers that you started to notice when you made that separation um, so I think you've you've hit I think you've hit the nail on the head and the core the core thing I think with recovery and reintroduction to sports particularly is is the belief you see once you've changed that belief that you're not structurally damaged it becomes a lot easier however that sounds really easy but in reality it's really really difficult and and for me some people will be quicker for me that wasn't a straight line so I started to the, the first things that started to get the belief was after reading the material so you've got to expose yourself to the information then it absorbs and sits in the subconscious somewhere um, my my personal experience was I, I sort of get it conceptually but it's not me you know my, my, if you felt this you would know that this is structural <laughs> Um, so that, that was how I felt. But then I started noticing patterns, so, you know, changes at work, flare ups, new jobs, new directors. I mean, the technology industry is my full time job and there's quite a lot of change. And I just noticed patterns. And then um, so that is the first step of the belief was, oh, wait on a minute, something there's something more happening here. Um, 
so I think that, that was the first thing. Then there's the like the building of evidence, um, the building of evidence of when those occasions that you don't have pain, or maybe there was something you did and you expected the pain, but you forgot about it and the pain didn't come more. Um, and and starting to like really analyze um your experience of movement and experiences of pain. And that all that, if you kept I kept that in an evidence diary, if you like, and started building this, um, coupled about what reading success stories of other people, um, watching things like this, or we'll go back then, there were fewer of them about, but um, you know, hearing from other people that recovered, and all this starts to build the, that that change in belief, um, and and that shifted a lot of my pain. When you come to reintroducing sport and activity, though, there's always that little niggle, you know, so. <laughs> It's always that little niggle where you're starting to push and you go, but what if, what, what if, uh, what if that MRI scan is right and I'm going to do irreversible damage by doing this stupid triathlon? What's the point? <laughs> and, and, and for me, there was that, that's the bit that took a lot, a lot longer. So I could see the pain come falling off my body, relaxing and just in general life, the episodes dipping and dipping. Um, but, but that starting to push again that was where the doubt the doubt comes in um yeah and i find that's the bit that, that's difficult <laughs> but you've done it you've done it and that means that you're allowed to feel the fear again aren't you and mm. you're allowed to witness the frustration yeah it's like, it's, 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 yeah but young people want to think of it as that linear this, this straight line of success and it's not it was forwards back it was left right up down slowly slowly I, well actually I, I i like to use the analogy of spiraling upwards it's like it feels like you're going around in circles but every time the loops get a little bit smaller and you're working it out um but yeah but that that, that i can't pretend you know that i read the books did the material and the fear wasn't there that's not that's nonsense it comes back kept coming back and kept coming back and um it's really really difficult to 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 nail that belief i think and the number of exercises number of things you can do but it's really difficult to get that right um and i don't know maybe i wonder whether the the the, the neural pathway the longer you i have a theory i let's say that the longer you're in that period of believing the harder it is to unpick the believing <laughs> so i spent 15 years developing some pretty pretty uh, strong neural pathways about what I was and wasn't able to do. So I think that's why maybe it took a couple of years to to rewire. Yeah, uh, that you're absolutely right, though. When you think of the neural patterning, <clears throat> once it's repeated lots and lots and lots, it's quite like, a, like an insulated uh, electrical cable. Mm. And it's always going to surge really fast when it's there's a familiarity with it. And the pathway has been insulated, and that happens in the brain with the same sort of structures. If you think of a insulated wire, and um, so when you change it, put a new piece of wire alongside it. You can imagine just it's an uninsulated copper wire, not really, not connected in any any real uh, strong basis. So new connections are relatively weaker than these strong defaults in relative terms as you repeat them they lay down uh interconnections the mm -hmm. new uh behaviors then that gets myelinated and now what changes the uh default is the intensity of the emotion with the new behavior a huge shift on one moment uh someone's stuck in fear reads a book and the fear drops immediately the pain goes because it's a it's an epiphany mm. when it isn't as quick as that and it takes time it's almost a very strong belief system with lots of fears and frustrations and lived experience of that and lots of attached to lots of cues and you're trying to take all these cues in that person's life and switch all the emotion off well they're still mm. doing that in a life where there might be a parent or might be a, a partner, might be a colleague, might be a work person, might have responsibilities. So these stresses and strains of life that feed the emotional pathway that already takes them here is a difficult one to escape. If you took an addict of a socially unacceptable behavior, if it was alcoholism or drugs or being arrested for criminal activity, we take them out of the environment and 
put them in a rehab center or a prison for a certain number of days to starve the dopamine pathway essentially of their craving. Mm. That's without life going on around them. And even that doesn't work for some people because as soon as they go back to the same cues, they return to the same behaviors. Yeah. So yeah. That, that's how difficult it is for humans to change. Yeah. And I think, I think now with hindsight and like the beyond bit I talk about is like a, so you get, you, I've developed and I've, I know other people have who've recovered, you sort of develop an awareness of, of the whole system. So I think the system, actually part of me now you know views it as healthy you know you're, you're starting to push yourself you actually you're unsure you've got this new information you think it might be relevant and you're starting to doubt it i think i think that would be a logical thing to do you know <laughs> you've been given some information by one camp that says you're knackered and some that says you're not and so there's going to be a conflict because that's at the time i don't get that but now but when i say you, you your realization expands and and you become your awareness expands, and now I can see that that's actually quite healthy behavior. Actually, you 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 learning a new belief, so therefore you need to be a bit more chilled out about the fact that your mind is going to jump around a little bit and start doubting, and and uh, and and that's when you to come back to the techniques to to reaffirm, but to you appreciate that some doubt might occur, but you've got the techniques now to to go and deal with it. You know, back to that evidence diary, for example, or some of the other things that you can do. Yeah, if you're driving, you're describing psychological flexibility. And these are the points of where I used to have, and this is the life it led to. Someone's saying this, I'm not sure of that. I prefer this viewpoint. Well, actually, yeah, I'll look at that a bit more and lessen the attachment to that. And now I'll consider both of this and move forward through life and let's see which one I, I aligns with me. Yeah. And so it doesn't mean that that belief system is gone forever. It just means it's let it's dormant. Yeah. This one's the dominant one. There'll be times in your life this flares up, perhaps, but then this is very strong. And it's about moving through life knowing that, yeah, we're going to suffer physical pain and emotional trauma and uh, days of upset and days of excitement. But actually, knowing that you can just move through it with uh, some logic, as well as the emotion spilling out of left, right, and center, the logic almost carries us through. Logic carries us through and hopefully some emotional reactions linked to logic that are automated that help take us through it without too much stuttering. Yeah, but when you're in it, that's what I'm saying. When, when you're in that pain experience, it's like, this is the truth, this is the truth, this is the truth. No, this is the truth, this is the truth, this is the truth. And, and it's only when you can stand back and watch that you're going to go that way, then you're going to go that way. And that's that's normal. That level of perspective took, took quite a while to to develop, but when you, when you're actually in it, you can't see the other. I was just yeah. going from one it, tunnel to the other tunnel. <laughs> it's the four classics: fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. Yeah. We're all in them, and we'll all get them again. So you've uh, told your uh, kind of history of where you've been. I know that you've produced films with another lady called Penny George, who I've chatted to, and yeah. some people about her talking her uh, that field. And you've told other people's stories. And so now, you, on top of telling your story and helping other people tell their stories, you also help people uh, recover now, haven't you? And just tell them about the, uh, how you got into actually helping other people. Because this is, I think, anybody watching this who's interested in physically pushing their body yeah. back to a normal level or beyond, I'd love to hear maybe get help from you in the future. So how did you get to the point where you felt you could help someone? Tell us someone you've helped. I guess I'm at the start start of that journey. I'll, I'll be really honest um, about the, my, how I got to this point. So I think a lot of people recover and they want to tell people. So that was me also. And I wanted to, I wanted to do this um, work for, I wanted to help other people. Um, I, I became a personal trainer quite shortly after my um triathlon and i did jo georgie oldfield serpa course and serpa, uh, serpa trained um course so i did that and then really um sort of dabbled a little bit with working with with people and well and, and i found it quite difficult actually because where i was coming from was trying to convince people 
that their chronic pain was mind body related and i don't think that works i think it's very difficult i think you can um it's very difficult to to help someone make that realization and i, I quickly came to the point that actually the the best thing that i could do was to help create content um by sharing my story so I'm, i i love journaling i've been on um your podcast um or zoom what do you call it youtube channel before talking about journaling um so I, I and i've wrote articles on recovery and things that i've done um like returning to running and things like that um but i wanted to i still wanted to help so uh, i I joined forces with Penny and at the time we we created an organization which is now she's gone on to continue with called Living Proof, which I'm an ambassador for. So I do some voluntary work for that organization. And that has involved in the past things like co-producing two films that people might have seen, um, two recovery films that live in, are on Living Proof's website. Uh, so still so still helping out there where I can. Um and then I also sort of helped a couple of people, not particularly sport related, but just friends really, and in, in um, recovering from certain uh, conditions, um, some a couple of back pain ones, and a, a psoriatic arthritis. Um, a, a friend who had psoriatic arthritis, and they've they've made full recovery. Um, so I just thought I couldn't find sort of the area where I could do any coaching. Um, until until I wrote the article on returning to running, um, and it got quite quite a lot of reads, like a thousand reads or something. I just thought that maybe there is a an opportunity there or a, a niche where there are people like me who were wanting to do more, and uh, potentially I might be able to help them. So I'm right at the start of this journey, but I'm basically I still work full time, but I'm you know making myself available as a side gig or whatever to to help a couple of people uh, two or three people at a time I guess it can't be the numbers won't be great but um just to see if I can offer people like me some assistance and sort of shorten that road to recovery that's that's the intention well they say the numbers won't be great but they'd be great if that one person who sees you can then run the marathon they want to run or the fun run they want to get back to playing tennis or they able to walk around the park with the grandchildren it's all relative isn't it it's a uh, what they call call it passion project or uh i've heard it people call things like um you have you have your nine to five and then you can have a five till nine (laughs) five till nine job in the evening so uh, so it's my five till nine and that's the plan well, it's a great plan. So you've got a website, you've got contact details. I can share them with people who are interested in kind of perusing that. You've wrote some content uh, and done some uh, workshops that I'll link all of these different resources in the uh, spiel wherever we post this video. And it's nice to know that you're kind of making yourself available for that as a live resource, not just a recording. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it is relatively new territory, but um, uh, I should imagine it would be rewarding if we can help people get back to winning stuff. That would be even better. <laughs> the, 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 the combination, if you like, of the experience you've had, uh, the telling the story, but more importantly, you have to listen very carefully when you tell someone's story, don't you? Yeah. yeah to exactly. tell it well, you have to listen intently and say very little, the more you say, you tend to miss what they say. (laughs) So you've done that. You've trained in personal training. So you know the nuts and bolts of conditioning. Yeah. You understand the component parts and the nuance of, of what can help someone in recovery and that that's not for everyone, even Mm -hmm. though it might help you or something might have helped me or, my patients, you get someone who actually it just doesn't resonate with them at all. Exactly. And so you know, if you've got a problem solved, what might be the right step for them to take? And it might not be a step at all, it might be to, just to get them to understand the situation a little bit differently. I think you're perfectly positioned to offer this, whether it's the one person or 100, Dan. Yeah, no, that's, that's kind of you to say. The other thing I took in there is golfers as well, because I had a, so I'd, I'd lost interest in golf for like, 20 years 
And then I started playing again recently and I'd already done the triathlon, felt myself recovered and everything. And then there was that, when I talk about that doubt coming back, went back to play golf. Oh, the last time I played this was when I was like in, in struggling with severe pain. Um, but I can play golf as well without any trouble. <laughs> so it applies to it applies to other activities that aren't just about um swimming, biking, and running. It, it applies to any physical <laughs> yeah, any It applies to any psychological and emotional de- demands. It's the ones that you ask for of yourself. Essentially, you're choosing, and which means that the gates are open for anyone to pursue what they wanted to in yeah. a sensible way, and you can offer a path to that. But more importantly, I think, is the ones where we get sideswiped and the stuff that happens in life that we never ask for and can't predict and it will happen, that those skills are just as important, aren't they? Yeah. And the, the feeling of uh, every now and again, I'll be, I'll be out running or playing golf or whatever. Golf's a good one, actually. Just when everything's crap and I'm playing terribly. Which is most of the time, but the, that feeling when you just go, ah, but I didn't think I could ever do this again. <laughs> it's absolutely brilliant, and it just puts everything into perspective. <laughs> it, yeah. it, that that tiny neural pathway <laughs> yeah. of humour and reflection, yeah, the, the, tap into when you're on your own. That's a skill, though, isn't it? Yeah. That's a skill uh, um, to know that we're just on a ball of dust spinning in the middle of the universe. Yeah, it involves with sticks. <laughs> and to be able to find the enjoyment in that moment and then move into the next, it's, it is, it's brilliant. Yeah. And I, I, it, 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 I've spoke to you a few loads of times and it's always a pleasure to speak to you and I get you know, sincerity in what you do. And uh, maybe I've pushed you a little bit, say, come on, Dan, put yourself out there and do, or be open for business or be open to volunteer or whatever you want to do, whether you charge hundred pound or a pound, it doesn't matter. Uh, you you, you have value. You really have real value that it'd be a shame to put you, lock yourself in a cupboard and stay in the corporate world for, world for the rest of your life. <laughs> You you, uh, you raise a good point, actually. So you did push me, and thank you very much. Um, but and, and I do intend to charge. I haven't worked out what yet. Um, <laughs> however, um, yeah, so I do like a – I might intend to have a conversation with someone free initially, Just, you know, like a half an hour, 45 minutes, work out if I can help, whether we're the right match, um, et cetera. Um, but – I also have it in mind that if there are people who can't afford to pay anything, um, but really want to get back into sport, I would take a a donation to Living Proof as you know one of their ambassadors, and that'd do whatever whatever they could afford, fifty p or a pound or whatever. Um, I would also go down that route too because it is a, a a five to nine passion project more than anything. Oh, that's really gracious of you. I I um I'll. Like I said, um, after one of the other questions, I'll put, I'm going to put all the contact details that you're happy for me to share on this. And um, so if anybody is interested in, in approaching you, quite happy for them to do that by those contacts, Dan. Yeah, or that, like, I think Dan Hinesley on Instagram, Daniel Hinesley on Facebook, send a direct message. That's probably the easiest way. But yeah, if you put the link up there, that'd be great. Yeah, good stuff. Well, I hope it's the start of, I know you've already helped people, Maybe it's the start of uh, another venture that maybe starts as a five to nine job, but you never know, it might become nine to five. Yeah, well, that, ideally one day that would be great, but um, we'll see. Still alive.